Welcome to Film Riot. Today we're talking about the Story Clock Notebook. We did talk about it briefly on the show before. You only have a couple days left, by the way. So if you were wanting to get a Story Clock Notebook, make sure you go and get involved with that Kickstarter before Wednesday night, which is when it ends. But I wanted to have Seth on the show today to talk about the Story Clock and how he uses it to develop his stories, because I think it's a very interesting method. I have used that method for years. We've talked about that on the show before, but it's not the only one I use. I use about three or four different ways of breaking or developing a story, which I just fluctuate depending on what I'm working on or just what mood I'm in at the time. One of which is my very own version of just chaos nonsense, which completely works for me. But I think it's really helpful to hear how other people view story or see how they go about developing a story. I think there's a lot that can be taken away from that. So I figured we'd have Seth on the show today to talk about that. Logo. So for the Story Clock Notebook, we've talked about it on the show before, but why do you think specifically that's a a good route to take as opposed to others? You know, I mainly through all this, I'm just speaking first and foremost for myself. I know for me and my process of writing that when I get an idea for a story, I don't just get one idea. I get like a thousand ideas and they all hit me at once. And that's a really exciting time of writing, but it's also one of the most important parts to capture as fast as you can and to get it on paper. But once it's on paper, that organic process of the story kind of telling itself to you, it it stops at a certain point. And a lot of your best material kind of relies on you to be able to organically keep that momentum going creatively. And years ago, I was introduced to this concept of, of outlining in the form of a clock. And I thought it was really cool at first when I heard it. And then I kind of never, and years went by, um, because it sounded like a cool thing that I never really put into practice. But then when it really kind of came together for me was when I was watching, I was watching Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I don't know what reminded me of this, but the clock method kind of popped back into my head and I thought, I wonder how that looks for a movie that actually exists. And I just started writing down time codes. While watching Last Crusade, I wrote down time codes of when stuff happened and what happened then. And then I took all the time codes and everything and I, I converted them into onto a clock form, basically where like a two hour movie, your hour midpoint is right there, the six o'clock mark and so on. And I just started putting in, you know, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in this format. It was really fascinating to me to see that like, for one, to be able to look at the movie from like a bird's eye view and see, you know, in your mind, you feel like, you it, remembering a movie, you feel like, oh yeah, like that was probably 30 minutes in that that happened. But when you put it into this format, like you realize, oh, that moment was actually like a t like the middle of the movie. It was an hour in. So to like see pacing, what the pacing of a good story actually looks like is really helpful for, for learning. And so then I kind of reverse engineered that into this personal process for me that's just when you get an idea, you get a thousand ideas, you put them all on paper as fast as you can, and then you have a general rough idea for when they land, when they would fall into the movie, when you think they'll, they'll land. And you drop them in, and then you start looking at the gaps in the story, um, in your story, and you realize, oh, I thought I just thought of 90% of my movie, but I actually just thought of like 30%. There's, there's, there's an entire other 60%, that's not math, there's an entire other <laughs> 70% uh, left to do and like and what is that content like where do you get that from and i i think that you know i had a really brilliant professor tell me in one of my single years of college that comedy can never be injected it can only be extracted um meaning that the best comedy is not just brought in from an outside source it's pulled from the events you're currently in it's pulled from the situation and i love that and i feel like the same can be said for any great storytelling and ideas and that the best story threads the best moments everything f should feel extracted from a pre-existing situation or pre-existing condition and so what's great about this clock method for me at least the benefit of it is that i've got you know all these all these ideas here on this side and i've got all this like I've got them laid out to where I think they happen in the movie, but then I've got all these huge gaps. I don't know what to fill them with. And when you find that, it, that like if good stories have a certain rhythm and rhyme to them and a symmetry to them when put in this format, you can look at the other side of the clock and see, well, what's happening over here that I can set up right here or that I can pay off that's happening from up here. And it's a way to organically fill up the story rather than bringing in I alien foreign ideas from the outside and injecting them in and further convoluting your story. That's great. So so it's it's really just taking the main sort of lightning strike, eureka ideas that you have when you're coming up and excited with the project and then being able to fill the rest in based off of those ideas and where they should line up in the story, sort of like you say, a symmetry sort of thing. Yeah, it's almost like taking the ideas that you get in that lightning round, in that, you know, that first lightning phase of getting ideas and kind of 
what's what would be a good gardening term for like turning them into soil that things can grow out of? You're like hoeing, hoeing. It's like hoeing those ideas, yeah. hoeing them up straight, All right. and uh, hoeing them up straight. That's that's a term. That's slang. And turning those ideas into like fertile soil to be able to grow more ideas from them, rather than just keep planting and throwing in outside ideas. It's a way to organically grow your story in a more cohesive thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's great. It, it's it's almost like a cheat code for breaking your story without cheating at all. Well, and that's the thing is like, there's no right way to do no, this. Totally. And that's what I love is that if there's no right way to do it, then there are, then there are ways like this that are totally cheat codes, but there's nothing wrong with them. It's like, it's like what, if whatever gets you there. And for me, this has really revolutionized how I get there um, over the past several years. And so we've gone through a lot of different mock-ups and we've made this thing that I just think is incredibly cool. And I've already been using it nonstop. Like here, the first half is for research. Let's cut right down the middle. The first half is research. Second half is development. So the first half you have these, these uh, blank templates that have a time code log, on one end, where just like I was talking about Last Crusade, you go through, you write down time codes for what happens, or for when it happens and what happens, and then you can have a clock over here to be able to drop it in. And so, and what's nice about that is having your research all in one place. Like, so I've got Raiders of the Lost Ark here. I've got, uh, I've started Inside Out. I didn't get to finish it. My kids got uh, interrupted, and we had to move on to other things. But I'm going to come back to it. So, like Guardians of the Galaxy. What's so? What's uh, the stuff? I could fill an entire podcast with the stuff I learned from this process and things like this that I've, I've learned. So Guardians of the Galaxy and Rogue One, both, uh, I found this interesting. Their act one break is where it normally falls in movies, but they're, and your act three break is usually kind of, is usually right here on the other side. On Guardians of the Galaxy, it's right here. It's this really like back heavy act three, this like really, really heavy act three. And same thing in Rogue One. Rogue One has the same act breaks. And that, makes sense when you think about movies these days like these big blockbuster movies blockbuster movies watching you feel like the endings like they go on forever a lot of the time and it's because they are they're actually longer third acts and they actually cause the midpoints of the movies to no longer fall when you do them this way they don't fall in the, right here in the middle they fall over here to the side so that was interesting and I, I want to look into that more in some in, in other kind of contemporary blockbusters and see if that's a common thing because they offset the clock entirely to where your midpoint is not actually in the middle of the movie it's like sooner in because they have have these anyway nerdy stuff that you learn from this research section so it's 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 great for breaking your own stories but it's also really good if you're just starting out and wanting to learn just to dissect movies as well like you said broke right down the middle to between education and actual application well dude i think you and i both agree that's some of the coolest um products out there um in what we do have those built in have that built in yeah. they have the room for for they have the resources for education. They have um, room for exploration and for kind of learning stuff on your own and figuring stuff out. But they have power to be able to get work done and get stuff done. And that was our goal with this. And uh, when when do you think you guys are going to be able to be start shipping this to uh, your your backers? Right now, we are uh, we're slated as promised to ship uh, by the end of August. Wow. Um, but if you if you pledge, so that's if you pledge for a physical notebook. If you pledge, I believe there's like a five dollar tier and a ten dollar tier that are digital only rewards that are a PDF of the notebook um, and a video tutorial as well. And the the PDFs they'll probably ship sooner than the uh, end of August. Um, but uh, if you get it for yourself a physical notebook, those will be shipping at the end of August. And again, that's Wednesday night. It's done. So once Wednesday night hits, Wednesday it's, night, it's done. All right. We are already in talks and in plans, uh, working through our post campaign um, plan of action. We would love to keep offering these beyond uh, the Kickstarter. Uh, they probably will not be available immediately after the Kickstarter. Um, I'm not sure. We're not sure yet how much time will go by after the Kickstarter before we actually open up post campaign orders. So it's important that if you really, really think this might be cool and really want it, um, that you get to a before Wednesday night, before the campaign ends, because I, I can't promise how soon you'll be able to get it after. Logo. Thank you again to Seth for taking time to talk to us about that. Again, if you do want a notebook, check the link in the notes below. We have that there for you. And now we pay bills.
There's nothing more discouraging than having a pile of overdue paperwork just sitting there staring at you while you're trying to work or do anything you enjoy at all. Well, our friends at FreshBooks have now launched our all new cloud accounting software that will give you more time to do the work you love and not feel discouraged by the paperwork demon. FreshBooks has been redesigned from the ground up, custom built for the way that you work, and it's the easiest way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. While all new FreshBooks is not only ridiculously easy to use, it's also packed full of powerful features, create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds, set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. See when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. Right now, FreshBooks is offering a free 30 day unrestricted trial to you guys. To get that, all you gotta do is go to freshbooks.com forward slash film riot and enter film riot in the how did you hear about us section. Logo. So that's it for today. But before we get into what I'm watching, just as a heads up, we are bringing Monday Challenge back next week. Sorry it's taking so long. There's just a lot that goes into those. I know it doesn't seem like it, there is, but there really is. But we are bringing it back next week. We're very excited about that. So keep a lookout for that. But what I'm watching recently, I saw Wonder Woman. I did tweet about it, but I really loved it. It's one of my favorite superhero movies. And I mean, if you watch the show, you know how I feel about superhero movies. They're personally, for me, not the number one reason I go to the theaters. And I don't usually see most of them in the theaters. But I really uh, dug this one. I was very interested going in, and I was not disappointed. I really liked how unapologetically sentimental it was. You don't get a lot of that nowadays, and it was really nice to see. Like I said in my tweet, there was just such a wonderful lack of cynicism that you get from a lot of movies nowadays, especially DC movies, when these are supposed to be heroes. So it was nice to have a return to that, a return to uh, hopeful humanity uh, and heroism. I really dug it all throughout, and I think Patty Jenkins did an amazing job. Some of the, definitely the best action that I've seen in any DC movie yet. So if you haven't seen it, definitely go and check it out. I think it's worth your time. I liked it. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. So we talked about the Story Clock Network. Network? Story Clock. Welcome to the Story Clock Network. I'm your host, <laughs> Ryan Connolly, and he's Seth Worley. You're confused. Story Clock Notebook. Storyclock.co. And we're done. 